program with our host, MC, um, who's Katie Halper from Laughing Liberally. She is a political activist, a teacher, and a comedian. as close to Zabar's as possible, <laughs> and they found it. Um, my mom still talks about the Bronx Irish Catholic pogroms that she fled, uh, but some things, you know, stick with you. Um, but uh, I wasn't, like, I didn't grow up celebrating any Jewish holidays or anything. Um, like, my family, I actually thought Passover, which is, like, you know, uh, the, the Jewish Easter, uh, I thought that that was a black holiday, like Kwanzaa, but a lot older, because my family like starts off with the Jews in Egypt, but then would start talking about slavery in the United States, like pretty early on in the Seder. Um, so it's that type of Jewiness, if, if that comes across at all. Um, or if not, that's fine too. You've learned something. Uh, yeah, so uh, despite the chemistry, I think I'm just going to keep this going and bring up our first speaker. Um, and I'm really excited, actually, to bring up these two speakers one at a time because they're both people I really admire. Um, one is the executive director of the NYCLU, Donna Lieberman. And the other is um, a councilman from Brooklyn who is also uh, an, a Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street arrestee. I don't know if I'm going to coin that word. Um, Jamani Williams. Okay, we're just, oh, um, uh, whatever you prefer, let's switch around the mic. Five minutes, or we can just stand, right? Yeah, we might as well stand, and you can just, just make sure you mic it. It's fine. Go here? Yeah, that's fine. Right. So, I think we're each talking, right? Yeah, yeah. go first, then you go yeah. first. Is it five minutes each? Yep. And we know what happens in five minutes, we get the cane. Yeah. So, go ahead. You want me to go first? Sure, okay. Hello. Hey. hey. How's everybody doing? You can't be tired already. You can fight. I mean, we just started battling, so how are you going to be tired? <laughs> I don't want to go over my five minutes, so I'll try my best to be brief. But in case people don't know, the Occupy Wall Street people there are starting to hop over the fence over there now. So things are starting to pop over there. So when we finish over here, maybe you guys can go over there and show some support. I think something else is supposed to pop off tonight. And it may be big, so you guys should, should look out for that. So we have progressives in the house. <laughs> All right, we gotta get a little louder than that because we've been losing the battle and it's very, very, very unfortunate because we are on the right side of the battle. We are on the correct side of the battle. We are on the righteous side of the battle and we have been allowing people far too long to take what we do best and to spread garbage around the country. Um, it's very, very unfortunate. I mean, the problem I have is, it's like they, the right side, Tea Party, all these crazy people, are saying the wrong thing, right? They've been bombarding this country with weapons of mass ignorance. 
uh, for, quite, for quite some time. And we have been allowing them to do that. And the only way to defeat ignorance is with information and knowledge, which we have, but we haven't been, we've been punking out for a while. I mean, these guys, uh, and I'm sorry to use the phrase, but have been using economic and social terrorism with this country for a very long time. And that's really what it is, and we have to treat it like that's what it is. Because we are saying to people, we want to make your lives better. What they're doing is wrong. And they, for some reason, have convinced America that what they're doing is right. And we know that trickle-down economics doesn't work. It's time to try some trickle-up economics. Um, and the only way that's going to happen is if the people in this room get excited about it, stop being scared of the word progressive, stop being scared of being called a rebel or all the other news that they, Martin Luther King was called everything but a child of God in this time. And we are the ones that want to progress to a better future while they want to conserve the crap that already exists. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is if we get fired up. So are you guys fired up? Yeah! You don't sound fired up, man. You don't sound fired up. These guys will do whatever it takes to bring us in the wrong direction. And they have proved it. They'll use their form of social economic terrorism to shut this country down to make sure rich people get richer. And all we're saying is we want to make sure that we include everybody and that everybody has a right to eat, everybody has a right to feed their family, everybody has a right to have medical care. And if we filter both of our messages, our message will win every single time. And I think the only reason their message has been winning is because we haven't stepped up the way we're supposed to step up, and I'm talking about myself included. So we have to get louder, we have to get uh, a little stronger, and we have to no longer be afraid because if we lose this, everybody's going to lose, right? It's not just us, but everybody's going to lose. So we have to hold ourselves accountable as progressives. And if you came here, it's great if you took the first great step. But what are you going to do after this? You can't take the knowledge you have and then go home and then go to sleep and then go to work. That's not what they do. They're out there doing foolishness to the country. We got to do real stuff for the country. So I want you guys to think of two people who aren't here. I mean, really think about two people. I'm not just saying that. Think about two people who aren't here who don't usually get involved. You got them? The one thing I want you to do before you go to Occupy Wall Street is call them on the way out here and tell them one thing that you learned. Because if you filter the, the information properly, no one is going to be against the progressive value that we're trying to push. No one is going to say that rich people should get more money. And But they're calling them job creators. So they're spinning this thing all over the place, and we've got to bring it back to reality so people will understand. Is that cool? Yes. All right, so everybody stand up real quick. Because you can't fight sitting down. Stand up. All right, all right. You two, bro, you got to stand up, man. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have what it takes to change this thing. Actually, actually, turn to them again and say, I have what it takes to change this thing. Peace, thank you very much. Well, so, um, I'm Donna Lieberman. I'm the director of the New York Civil Liberties Union. I have a question for every one of you. I didn't come here to promote the NYCLU, but what the hell? How many of you are members? How many of you like what we do? How many of you count on us to do what we do? So what the fuck is going on with you guys? You're the activists? Give me a break! Give me a break! I'm... No, all right. I'm... <laughs> but like, there's something wrong. There's something wrong if you count on us to do a job and you don't take the three minutes and 20 bucks to join. Because, because how are we going to get to do our job? How are we going to get to do the things that you count on us to do, like make our democracy work, or at least criticize it when it doesn't, if you don't have the, 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 what is it? Is it like you're worried about running for office and being accused of being a card-carrying member of the ACL fucking you? <laughs> I mean, is it that you just assume somebody else will do it? Or you assume that we get government funds? Or, you know, you got to step up. So, Jamani just told you all to, like, stand up and tell each other that you have what it takes. 
I believe you have what it takes to go online and join the ACLU. <laughs> Trust me, we're not going to get rich off everybody who joins today, although you never know. We could have some closet one percenters in the room. It's possible there are some good guys in their ranks, you know, who vote against their class interests from time to time. But it's about being active. It's about, and, and really, you know, um, I said all that. It just came to me. Um, but it was not a bad idea. So I, 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 I want to tell you, you know, just a couple of thoughts that I have about, like, you know, what's coming in the mayoral election. I know we're all focused on the presidential election. Maybe we won't have elections after that if those bimbos, you know. Do you believe New Cambridge is serious? I mean, do you believe, do you believe those guys, you know? And Donald Trump is promoting it as reality TV. Holy shit. New Cambridge. New Cambridge. So, <laughs> um, but, but, you know, we have seen in the last couple of months, thanks to the Occupy movement uh, in part, the, the, the Teflon coating of uh, Police Commissioner Kelly. Um, like, it's got some scratches. You know, he's made some missteps. And, 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 and that, the scratches in his Teflon armor, it's a, it's a new thing in, in military apparel, te Teflon. Um, uh, the scratches are scratches that, that we have been trying to put in that suit for years because of the, the policies of the NYPD in communities of color. And, and I'm referring to the stop and frisk policy where if you're black in New York, basically chances are at some point, particularly a guy, at some point during the year, you're going to be stopped and frisked by the police department for simply walking while black. And, and this is an issue that gets like, you know, it gets a, a little bit of attention in the New York Times occasionally when the numbers come out. But like, where's our city council on that? Where's the CCRB on that? What is the CCRB? Does it exist? Does it work? Well, barely, you know? Um, and, and if you are black and you attend a New York City public school, you know, your chances of getting suspended for dissing a teacher or for arrested for, or for being in the halls, or for being late to class, or for being, uh, or, or for getting arrested for writing on your desk, are far greater than if you're a white student. And your chance of the Board of Education, Department of Education, spending our taxpayer money for testing, for standardized tests, rather than on guidance counselors and teachers or keeping class size down, are far greater. So these are issues that I want to bring to your attention. I heard that somebody who was planning this thing was, was planning an education panel and said, the NYCLU, what do they do about education? We do a lot about education. So go online and find out what we're doing. We have a report that says it all as far as I'm concerned. It's called, well, we have a couple of reports. Criminalizing the classroom, where they turn school discipline into a crime. They have more cops in the schools than guidance counselors. That tells you about their view of education. They probably spend more money on tests than they do on mentoring. So, so, so you guys are here to get active. A lot of you are going to go down to Occupy later on tonight. Um, you should go online and find out what we're up to. You should support us. You should be there. You gotta be active. You have to take initiative and participate in campaigns to get New York City to be responsive to the needs of the people, the real needs of the people, to get our state legislature responsive to the needs of the people. And one issue that probably isn't gonna get a lot of, a lot of attention today, so I just wanna mention it is the right to choose is under attack all over the country. Our president has no balls when it comes to defending women's rights either. And we have to, we have to stand firm, we have to stand firm for the right of access to contraception. Plan B, what is that about? They, they, they won't let kids get Plan B without a prescription, it's nuts. So, so 
there's lots to get active on, and let's do it, and, and let's tweet about it. I, you can, somebody wanted me to talk about tweeting, I'm over my time, but my, my handle, is that what you call it? Is, is just ask Donna, oh, hashtag just ask Donna, or whatever. <laughs> I know how to send the message. I know how to send the message. The NYCLU is all over Occupy Wall Street with Twitter, and, and, and we're on Facebook, so uh, I guess I said something about the lights on top. We need a chance. We need a chance. All day, all week, Occupy Wall Street. All day, all week, Occupy Wall Street. All day, all week, Occupy Wall Street. No. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. You. <laughs> I think I just violated the union rule. <laughs> um, this has been an amazing effort uh, with lots of people to thank. Uh, but I, I just want to use this moment to tell just a little, a little thing about how we get this done. But first, I'd like to ask, is there anyone who does not have a blue raffle ticket? Well, for shame, you should have one. And uh, there's Paul right behind you, uh, giving out some raffle tickets. The rest of you should be carefully ripping your tickets apart, putting one of them in your pocket, and saving the other one to put in the bucket. Now, why would you do this? Because you would like to go to Rhode Island and attend the Netroots Nation this summer without having to pay for your registration. Uh, that's a great benefit. We have a tradition here at Networks Nation of giving away, um, at Networks New York, and organizing 2.0, of giving away uh, registrations to this. We are part of the Networks Nation community. It's a very important community. And just to give you an idea of how that community works, I'd like to ask, who here has volunteered today? All right, keep your arms up. Who here has spoken at a panel? Because that means you were volunteering. You, didn't, you certainly didn't pay you. All right, who here is attending for a job that you care about, but you're not getting comp time for today? Ah, ah, oh yeah, so you're a volunteer too. And I just think the lesson here is that what we do together is this kind of event where people are volunteering their time in all kinds of directions is emblematic of this Network Nation community that brings a lot of people together from different, uh, uh, different places. How many are connected to the labor movement? Woo! Nice. All right, put your hands down. How many of you are organizers? Oh, that's nice. How many of you work for a 501c3? Yeah, yeah. How many of you do political work? All right, and there you have it. Um, so I would just like to, to emphasize that it can happen, and some of the people that really deserve mention are um, uh, Harry Weisbrin, uh, sitting in the back over there, who helped organize. Okay, stand up, Harry. Stand up. And Harry helped organize what well, uh, organize our, our job fair. Now, how many here are offering jobs today? You see those? Keep your hands up. Greg, uh, what job are you offering today? Uh, we have part-time and full-time community organizing positions available at NYCC. Christy? Um, online communication. Charles? Policy specialist at Progressive States Network. Joe? Uh, online communications in New York and communications online in Progressive Connecticut. Who, who else? Hands up. Job fair. All right. Oh, Jason. Uh, new media directors on Progressive Congressional Campaigns. Great opportunity. P triple C. P triple C. We got that guy. In the back. Uh, from do something.org, developer ah. and data analyst. Melissa? Uh, I'm always helping hire new media people for organizations and campaigns. Nice. Uh, Melissa from the New Organizing Institute. How many people here have taken uh, a boot camp or attended something with NOI? Oh, yeah. Other job? Yes. Great. So if you're interested in any of those job opportunities, what you want to do is congregate by that long blue table there and be able to converse with the job seekers and the job um, offers. 
Are you ready with the tub? We're going to start filling it. Okay, that's going on great. So after we finish this section, this plenary session, many of us, the very special of us, are going to go to the multi-purpose room and enjoy alcoholic beverages. Who here likes beer or wine? All right, the rest of you don't come. But those of you who like beer or wine, please join us. Um, I'd also like to point, is Alicia Roost here? Alicia Roost was our stage manager and helped us figure out what we were going to do today. Chris Malone, who's trying to walk away before I name him. <laughs> the Department of Political Science at Pace University uh, uh, helped us arrange this, and we're very grateful to them. Um, I could go on listing more names. I think you get the idea. Um, so I'm going to end right now. Ilana, who's up next? Uh, Juliana. Juliana? We have a wonderful, funny, humorous woman coming on stage. So hold on to your seats, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for the comedic stylings Ms. Juliana Ferlano. of Ms. Juliana Ferlano. <laughs> Hey, thank you for the lukewarm reception. I appreciate that. You guys must be fucking exhausted. Who's fucking exhausted? Yes! It's tiring, these things. Where'd you come from? You look adorable. You're cute. Who's this guy? Is that your camera? Oh, I don't know Brooklyn. You call me. I just swing this ring around. Just kidding. I was asked at the last minute to come up and try to make you guys laugh, and I was like, oh, okay, I can do my normal routine, right? And then I'm like, no, I can't do that. The feminists will be pissed, I can't do that. The labor unions will be pissed, I can't do this, I can't do that. But to be very careful, a left-leaning audience is very tricky. Very tricky. What is it? Make fun of rich people. Make fun of rich people? Yes. <laughs> It's so hard to make fun of rich people, and then later on, like, secretly in our heart of hearts, don't I want to be a rich person? Like, I really just fucking want to be a rich person. I do. I do. If I, I mean, I think I would use the money for good and not evil. I'm not going to, like, come and frack in your backyard or whatever, but... I fucking want to be rich. I'm not going to lie to you. Is that okay? Is that alright to be, like, a pro-labor... Honest. Don't tell anyone. This is a big date, right? This is not going on. It's not going on the internet. No one's tweeting this, right? You guys don't tweet Twitter. Can someone please show me how to use the internet? No, I'm just kidding. I had an iPhone, and it's been very helpful to me. Although I do think um, that I wish they had some. Now that I've been on Occupy Wall Street, I wish they had some um, more app, helpful apps. Like perhaps I was thinking, if someone could help me build. Um, the eye taser, that would be very helpful. <laughs> Not only would it help me to maintain my distance from arresting officers, but it would also help me get a seat on the train on the way home. That's the... <laughs> <laughs> I think it could have, like, I was thinking it could have, like, a couple of, um, you know, a couple of, like, settings. It could be, like, you know, cop setting. <laughs> and then, like, lower setting would be, like, Harry Krishna. <laughs> and then, like, I want a seat on the train. Oh one of the things they asked me to do, now that I've buttered you up with some uh, like laughter, is uh, to <laughs> this is ridiculous, right? Who paid money to be here today? <laughs> oh, good. Okay, great. That's good. Because what I'm about to ask you to do is we're going to pass around a bucket, not the same bucket, maybe the same bucket, or a nipple, or something, not the same bucket you put this in, but they are literally passing around an envelope, church style, to ask you to throw in a couple of bucks. Why are we doing this, Alana? Because we're running at cost. We're running at cost. You know what that means? We're screwed. They need money. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't need money, right? But if you can see in your activist hearts, into your activist wallets, and put a couple of activist dollars in the activist bucket, she's been working incredibly hard. Let's give her a round of applause, please. And all the organizers here. Do you know what cost means? It means no one's getting paid. That's what it means. It means no one's getting paid. So if you can, that'd be great. And I'll try to make it easier on you by saying something else that's funny and entertaining while I pass around the envelope. I'm not, I don't usually ask for money in the middle of a comedy set. It kind of takes the sting out, right? 
don't you feel like I cheated you? Like I made you laugh, and then all of a sudden I turned around like I hold, they hold me out. <laughs> it's like church. It's like church. Except I haven't molested anyone yet. <laughs> yet, the alcohol <laughs> is not too soon. Yeah, it is too soon. Did you hear today, I don't know if you guys are following the news or if you're totally engulfed in that room, but today, um, I believe it was in one of the Nordic lands, the Catholic Church actually did come out and say that they're going to pay back um, these kids. They came out with their own study about how many kids have been molested. It was actually one in five children. And that's their own study. So imagine how much it actually is. Right? And they're going to pay them according to the assault. Oh. Yes. So like, I cannot wait until they put out that list, <laughs> until they put out that color chart, you know what I mean? Like, we're fondling 6,500. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Not enough to cover your childhood traumas and your addiction and uh, recovery services, but you know. It's good. Have I depressed everyone? <laughs> because they are serving alcohol right after this. <laughs> I, I really love performing for that. I perform at the at the Netroots, the main Netroots, uh, and I and uh, I'm happy to perform here at Netroots New York. I live in uh, New York City, and I, I fucking love it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I love New York. I love all the activists here. I love the fact that we're the home. The we were the main home of Occupy Wall Street. I like being on the cutting edge, and so it's really great that all of you guys took the time to come out today and uh, do this. So give yourselves a round of applause. I hope that was funny enough for you. I'll see you in the bar, maybe I'll do a one-on-one -on -one joke for you if you want. You know. Okay, thanks a lot. My name's Julian Brown. Thank you guys. Just one. Oh. Eljoy, calling you out. <laughs> you have been selected from our list of contenders to decide who is going to go to Rhode Island. Oh. All you have to do... All you people who weren't nice to me today. You have to, you have to give a prayer and an intention before picking the, the right ticket. A prayer and an intention. Let's see. Let's see. Well, my own ticket is in here, so... <laughs> If I win, I'll give it to someone else. Let's see. Let's see. Who wants to go to Netroots? And that's at last year. Only a few people? No, I don't know. Uh, this past year was my first time going. Looking forward to going to Providence. How many we're picking here? One? We'll start with one and see how it goes. One? If, they, if that bucket is filling up, we'll continue this <laughs> and give away more. Okay, first one, ready? Yes. Seven. One. Two. <laughs> Nine. Five. <laughs> Four. Nice. I like that one. Let's do another. That's great. Legit. That's great. Should we do one more? Yeah. Let's see, can we do three? Yeah. We're going to save some for tomorrow and give the occupiers a chance. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Well, some of them know. wrong. Well, I appreciate you letting me be Man of Black at this moment. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some. Uh, Representation, some more color representation to go in the second ticket. Ready? <laughs> Seven, one, two. if I'm wrong. No, you're right. You're going. Yay, you're going. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you 
so much. Thank you so much. Come back tomorrow. We'll do this again. That's really exciting, by the way, that you're running in groups. I actually, not to be t TMI, but met my boyfriend at Network Station. He had me at what panel are you on? Um, but there's something in my family, I think, like my, we meet people through political meetings and conferences. My mom met a guy, uh, not my father, luckily, we figured out why soon enough, um, at a SNCC meeting. Uh, student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, Civil Rights Organization, um, and they dated for a little. And his name is uh, Mary Barron, <laughs> who will later become the mayor of DC until being forced to step down against us, like crack cocaine prostitution scandal. Um, so yeah, they dated. They did. Um, so whenever I'm mad at my dad, I, I tell him I don't have to listen to him because Mary Barron is my father. <laughs> Which just undermines my case. Uh, um, so you guys like Bloomer? Um, you know his accent is fake. He's from Boston. He talk, yeah, he talks like he's in New York. He talks like that. Oh, the best is uh, importante no salir de la panza porque hay terremotos. There's a whole woman who tweeted about that. She was here today. She was here? Oh, I wish I had met her. Um, oh, fuego, cuidado. Uh, sometimes Jews speak Spanish like it's Yiddish. It's cute. I like it. Um, uh, what else? So, oh, uh, you know who's actually training some of the people on Wall Street at, at the Occupy Wall Street shutdowns? Let me rephrase that. Do you know who's training some of uh, NYPD? Do you know what country is training them? Israel. Israel. Right? So, um, and it's really nice actually, it comes full circle because I remember once Bloomberg was actually defending uh, Israel, I don't remember what uh, genocide it was, I think it was some uh, uh, cast lead, cast iron, cast something.